Let's see. Mic check. We're going to check it out again. We're going to check it out again. You know, every time stuff gets to moving and flying around, you know how everything get. That's how you know today about to be lit. Let's see. There you go. All right, cool. Ooh, child. This is too. How them old folks say this too much. This too much. All right, we should be back now. We should be good. We should be good now. Let me see. Okay, we good. I don't know what happened. See, and see that's how it happened the last time. Whenever Dion was uh, whenever I was here with Dion, and we had to cut off and go back live like two, three times. The ball. Well, and then here's the. Oh, I never told y'all this. So, I don't, for everybody that tuned in that day, that uh, the first like the first I think it was like the first eight to fifteen minutes we had did the real good like intro and like basically how we got everything rolling. Whenever I went to uh cut off and cut back on because the sound or whatever of the last time when I was with Dion, when I tell you it deleted everything, I was hot. I was so hot. Cause like, you know, I could have do I could have post part one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. And it just didn't. It just didn't fall through. Child, I was in my feelings all day. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I was big mad. I was so mad. But let's get started. I didn't gave the intro already. Everybody that's that was uh in the live just now they back. You know, and so a few more people gonna be coming. I ain't gonna stress myself out about it. Everything happens for a reason. But um, yeah, I want to kind of do a, a part two. I want to I really wanted to dive into um I want to dive into love languages and I want to dive into uh basically the formula that I was hinting at yesterday about everything. So y'all just bear with me on today because I don't I have a little bit more time than extra, but I'm just really trying to map out how I'm gonna deliver this to you guys because this is I want to make sure I stay in that same that same theme that we kind of had yesterday without deviating too far because we're kind of deeming it a, a part two. But I guess we could start with um love languages. So let me pull up a few of my notes. In the meantime, I'll tell you what I know what we can do. So I want you guys in the comment section to write down what do you feel as though your love language is and what do you feel like your love language compliment what other love language does your love language complement because we're going to dive into we're going to dive into each one we're going to dive into each one because not everybody as as simple as it, as it may seem seem not a lot of people um not a, not a lot of people really understand the five to seven love languages you know because you got how can i put it it's really it's really five love love languages but like according to like i got like three different books on it there's like these, like, you know, how you got categories and then subcategories and stuff like that. You know, they'd they be real, real, real quick to put somebody in a subcategory or something like that. But in my opinion, it's like, I feel like there's really only five. So let's start off with words of affirmation. So love language, number one, words of affirmations is compliments are it's compliments are words of encouragement. But to go a little deeper into that, words of affirmation, if you're if you're if you're dealing with a person that that's that their love language is words of affirmation right one thing you're gonna have to be really mindful of is those people tend to need i ain't gonna say a lot of reassurance but conversation is their bread and butter like you need to make sure you need to hold a convo you can hold a conversation but you are able to really tap into how to talk to that person because the way you talk to them and the way you walk through those communications and those ups and those downs and those good days and bad days is going to determine how well the relationship flows and how well you'll get to know that person because they typically don't tend to be people that show you better than they can tell you like others they tell you before they show you you know or in the other or on the other side of the coin they rather be told than to be shown because those people tend to be more analytical they tend to be the people that I want to hear you say it because you, me hearing you say it means something. Me saying it or me telling you that, hey, I said this already. Because those are the type of people to where it's like, they're going to let you know what they like and they don't like. Off the rip. They're going to be like, hey, here's who I am. Here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. You move accordingly. And, you know, when mad day comes or when stuff comes, they'll be quick to say, hey, look, I told you about this already. So if you're involved with somebody who um, is a words of affirmation person, you know, like if they tell you something, try your best to remember it. If they're if if they are the type of people that's asking and that's nothing too. they'll they'll typically be like, hey, I need like, let's let's talk. I just need to talk. You know, I need to 
<clears throat> excuse me, y'all. I need I've been saying I need to put bring water up in here. I just be waking up, brushing my teeth and just coming straight up in here. I have a problem. Um, no water, no nothing. Just get on on Facebook. I just pray and come straight on here. Good morning, CC. Um, but those type of people like like, cause I'm, I'm not necessarily, that's not necessarily my main love language, but I know for a fact, I'm big on words of affirmation. It's not that I need reassurance is that I love reassurance. Remind me that you care, you know, talk to me and tell me how you feel about me because I'm the type of person to where like, I can hit you up. I can make you a poem, a poem every morning. If you want a heartfelt letter, I can give you that every single morning, you know, but it's like, I like reciprocity. So I'm not going to do that. And then like, you don't at least acknowledge it or give that back to me in some way, shape or form. Because that's one thing about people who their number one skill is their words. They're expecting you to listen. Like you really got to take the time to listen to those people and pay attention to what they say, because if they said it nine times out of 10, they mean it. And there's a reason why they're saying it. It's not just like, Oh, they being petty or, Oh, they just trying to reiterate all the time. No, this is, if they keep saying it over and over again, or they keep talking about certain things, reiteration means, hey, I take this very seriously. I need you to take what I'm saying very seriously because say mad day comes, like I said before, I'll say you do the, the very thing I told you not to do. I, the first thing they're going to be like, nigga, was you even listening to me? Do you not remember what I told you when we first started this? Like what, what you got going on? And now that's, see, that's nothing too. When somebody places weight and value in their words, and they mean it and they talk to you and they express that very straightforwardly and you step on that. You got to realize their emotions, their their love, you know, their intimacy, their their severity, like all of that is in those words. So when you step on that or you don't remember or you cross that the wrong way, now you're hurting feelings. Now it, come, it can because it can come off as very disrespectful to another type of person. Oh, I just forgot. I'm sorry. Is that I didn't really mean nothing by it. But to them. You slap. That's like a slap in the face. You are crushing my world. Like I gave you the building blocks. Act accordingly, you know. But we living in a day and age where you know somebody could tell you exactly who they are these days, and and people are just they'll just walk all over you, you know. Like it's, it, they'll just say what they want to say and do what they want to do. And yeah, Tasha, it is a respect thing. Um, now going into love language number two is quality time. Their partner's undivided attention. Now here's the thing: a lot of people like to claim the quality of time uh, group or type as clingy. And it's not that they're clingy. It's more so that they value in to me. It's a compliment It's like this person is saying, I value your space, time and presence so much and your attention so much to where whenever I'm with you or I'm craving that I want it to be undivided because I want, I love that so much about you. And I love that so much about us. And a lot of things I feel like people fail to realize is you can be with a, 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 a quality time type of person and you can still set boundaries without hurting their feelings. It's the fact that boundaries are expectations and understandings aren't talked about initially are expressed. So when that person, because you got to think about it, it's their love language. That's how they show love. And if somebody loves you and they want to express it. And if that's their way of doing it, they're going to want to be clung up on you all the time because that's how they that's that's like that's like you being like, oh, well, when I get happy, when I love somebody, um, I love bringing them flowers. And but the other person is like, I like flowers, but I don't like them like that. But you really love giving people like that's the only way you know how to express yourself. So every day they get flowers, every afternoon they get flowers. And it's like, man, I appreciate that. But God dang. But to them, it's like, man, I love you. You know, it's like you don't you don't want my love. You don't want this, that and the third. But excuse me. Whenever y'all haven't established, you know, the boundaries or how much you can or cannot take and give in that type of situation when it comes down to somebody who likes quality time, then you'll do more uh, hurt than good because you have to establish with that type of person that, hey, it's not that I don't like spending undivided attention and time with you. It's just that, you know, I have limits and there's other ways I feel as though you can express that or I just because that's one thing people got to realize. It's not it's not a bad thing to require space in a relationship. You know, y'all both two different people. One person, like, like a person like me, I wake up on 10 every day, whether it's a slow start or a fast start. I'm on 10 every day. I wake up and I can, I can go bench press. Like I am just, I'm just like, Oh, that's just the type of, I'm just on 10, 24 seven. So it's like, for me, well, with the type of partner that I have, she's not a morning person. She's becoming a morning person because of the, you know, her promotion that she got at her job. Thank you, Jesus. But you know, I know I can't be, I can't 
every morning I can't be like, ah, come on. Ah, and like, no, I can't do that. Because if, cause if I do that, then now her day is not ruined, but it's like, bro, I cannot handle that. You know, but I'm a morning person. You know, I will. And it's crazy. I'm a morning person, but I could really stay up late, too. I guess I'm just an up person. I think I might be a crackhead. But anyways, <laughs> it's like you got to you gotta really, like I said, let's say set your boundaries. You know, like really set your boundaries where they need to be. And things like that won't get in the way. Or you'll have a less, you'll have a less likely chance of, like, offsetting things. You know, like we talked about uh, yesterday, expectation and fantasy. They need to not coincide sometimes you, cause, because you'll fantasize about something or you think it's supposed to be a certain type of way and you don't and you don't link that with reality or at least try to meld it with reality. It's a lot of gray areas and you got a lot, a lot of problems. But the next love language is um, receiving gifts. So symbols of love like flowers or chocolates and stuff like that. And to me, bro, that I could as who? Let me see. Amber, uh, my mom. Who else? Kimmy for sure. Um, definitely not my dad. And I can't think, I can't think of nobody. Joy. I'm trying to think of some other people, but like, you can tell that's their love language because it's not that they, it's not that, oh, they, they love receiving gifts as a love language. Them niggas going to find you. Even if you didn't even know you needed it, them niggas going to find you a fire gift. They going, what's going, good morning, Jay. They going to find you a fire. I'm talking about things you didn't even know you needed. Oh, I saw this and I thought about you. And it'd be exactly what you didn't even realize you need. Or it'd be exactly what you wanted. Them niggas know how to give gifts. Like people with that with that uh receiving gifts and giving gifts love language. To me, that's that's tough. And I'm not even a gift per uh, person like that. You know, I receive my blessings when they come and stuff like that. You know, like all like y'all can't see it, but all my studio and instruments stuff like here, I might have paid for if three to four things up in here. And we and we talking like over twenty thousand dollars worth of gear up in here. You know, and like I'm just thankful that God blessed me with stuff like that. But, you know, it's the pe it's the people that that just know how to be on it. They just know how to be on it. They know how to bring them gifts in. And Lord, if you give them, especially if you give them a gift, something that they like, you know, it is like they that they just ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like they they just like they light up and like they day is just they, to me they're the easiest people to please. Because it's like all you have to do, and I'm saying this from an analytical standpoint, that's just how I am as a person. Find out because they simple. They tend to be simple people, not in a bad way, but like, you know, simple meaning like a little bit easier to understand. Um, Find out what they like in it. Well, not really what they like. Find their interest. Find out what they're interested in things. They talk about. Good morning, Shakira. What they talk about a lot. What they really indulge in. Put them gifts in that area. Buy out. Most people give the love. Oh, hold up. I'm trying to see. See, I don't want to touch it because I want to miss nothing up. But I'm assuming it said I'm assuming Jessica said most people give the love language that they like to receive it. I think just remind before I even dive into that, um, let me know if I'm right. Cause the last time I touched this thing, the sound went crazy. I ain't trying to mess nothing up again. I'm not trying to go live again, but, um, yeah, man, it, it's, it's, and just to bounce off of what Jess said, if I read that right, it's definitely, that's true. But here's the thing. You got hybrids. I'm a hybrid. It's like, I'm one of those people to where it's like, I'm all about words. And I'm also all about like space and physical touch. Because I'm the type of people, I'm the type of person to where it's like, I like textures, you know? So if, if like, well, here's the, uh, here's a better way to put it. Like when it comes down to like physical touch and stuff like that, I, I like soft women, you know, I like bigger women because like, I just, that's just me. That's what I like. And when I was younger, I had like, and I still love like body pillows and stuff like that. But like, I don't know if y'all know them little, um, the ends of the pillows. Like if you rub it long enough, it get real, real, real smooth. And it's like a, it's like a coat. I ain't going to say like a coping thing, but it's like, it's just my thing. You know, and then like without without sounding crazy, but like, you know, you get you a you get you a, a shapely woman, you know, she's soft and stuff like that, and you get to rub in and like y'all hugging and stuff like that. That that's therapeutic for me. So like it's a mixture of quality time, physical touch, and Lord, don't let you be saying the right things. Don't let you be saying the right thing. I'm gonna just be sitting there like, look, how, how you want it? I'm here. I re look, I'm here to give and receive blessings. What you what you want from me? What do you want from me? You know, but 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 that's what I'm getting at. It's like you have people that are like legit hybrids, and I don't. I'm trying to think of somebody I know that I can give an example. Of. I, I can make an example, but I, I want to give somebody I know. But um, she said, yeah, and plush blankets. Don't get me started on plush blankets, child, child. But um, how can I put it? It's just I'll say this: whenever you're dealing with a hybrid, before we move on to the next thing, when whenever you're dealing with a hybrid, 
type of love language personality type of person, it's like you got to be careful because them the ups and downs. That's them type of people. They left and they right. You know, and, I, and I'm saying that from it because I'm that type of person. So it's like it's like either I want a combo some days or I just want one thing some days. Or maybe I just because some days I really be wanting my space. And it's nothing against my partner. It's nothing against who I'm talking to. But it's just like I just want my space that day. I really want my space. I want to be by myself for a little while. You know, I want to take the time to really just be like, hey, it's it's me. I want to be with me and for me right now. And, and y'all, nothing's wrong with solitude. That's all, It's just solitude, you know, because before I, that's how person I was before I was in a relationship. Like I. If I'm not by myself and to myself doing what I want to do or just enjoying my own personal time, it's like I'll be with my friends or I'll be out working and doing stuff, some stuff like that. But let me tell you something. Like she said, it's personal. We're humans. Exactly. And that's what I and that's sometimes that's what I need. I don't as much as I would like to be oh yeah, in your face and hugging and cuddling. Some days I come up in here, I close this door and I just work on music all day. You know, I write or like I'm just watching basketball highlights. I'm watching anime. I'm reading my books. I love reading books, y'all. I'm practicing on my instruments. I'm just in my own little world. I'm praying. I'm meditating. And don't let me have a I have the real crazy urge to go work out. I got my workout shed right there. Let me tell you something. I would, I would be just in there all day if I really could, you know, but it's like, that's just my moves. And then some other days it's like, I want to be hugged up. I want to go on a date. I want to spend, I want your undivided attention, you know? And it's like, you have people like that in this, in this world to where it's like, and I feel like we living in the, um, we live in a, Yes. I'm a big anime nerd. Let me tell you something. I don't watch TV cartoons and all that type of stuff. And I'll read, I'll read some manga. I, if only you could see it. I'll read some manga. I'll watch my anime all day, and I'll be in heaven. But um, if you ain't checked out Mob Psycho 100, yeah, go check that out. That's that's one of my favorite shows right now. And Fire Force, but we're not gonna dive into that right now. Um, but I'm just that type of person. And you have people like that these days. That's that are, they're hybrids, you know. So you have to understand how to move with and through these type of people. Because to, if I wasn't the type of person to explain myself. Are to be um, are to be straight to be how how can I say that? She said, "So you like the pencil people? What's the pencil people? I don't understand that. What you talking about? Let me know what that mean." But um, that that threw me off. I even I never heard that before. Pencil people. Oh, that really threw me off, y'all. Oh yeah, I'm the type of person to like really explain myself before I do things. Or if you if you have a question, ask me because I'm I'm not afraid to tell you how I feel. I'm not. Y'all can ask Tasha. Tasha is one of my uh my clients. Tasha, Ta- me and Tasha has just dope conversations. But like, it's one of the things to where it's like I don't have a problem telling you anything. Now, how you take it is on you. I'm a, I'm gonna try to be like as as polite as possible. I'm not a mean person, but it's like. He's like, well, why you don't want to spend time with me today? And you was all up on me yesterday and blah, 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 blah. And it was like, well, it's nothing against you. I just want some time to myself, you know? And then if you need me to explain further, I'll explain further. It's like, I love you. I love spending time with you, but I'm in, I'm in a space today to where I kind of just want to be myself by myself. I want to create, you know, I just kind of want to be in my own little world. And that's okay. You know, with communications comes, uh, well, with proper and open communication that dispels, bad expectations from the other person I, y'all everybody that know me know this is my favorite phrase i do not like gray areas i'm a yes or no type person i'm not a sure type of person i'm not a maybe type of person i'm not a what if it's gonna be a yes or it's gonna be a no you know and i just i don't like that in between because there's so much room for error and anticipation and expectancies and all this fantasy and all this type of stuff to where it's like we don't know for certain what's going on and then you expected something and i'm moving another type of way i don't like that you know she said the quality of characters seem like they were drawn with color pencils. I get what you're saying, but the nerd in me, see, I, y- y'all gonna make me talk about anime for like an hour, and I'm not gonna do that because that's not what this live this live stream is about. But I'll say this: anime is one of the things to where it's like once you, because it's not just cartoons. It's one of the things to where like once you dive into it, you got dramas, you got romance, you got action, you got heart. It's a whole nother. I'm not diving into that because I'm gonna start losing people. People not nerds like us. All right, and the last, uh, well, not the last, but before, not the last thing I'm talking about, but the last quality we're talking about is physical touch. So when it comes down to physical touch, a lot of people get that misconstrued with sex. A lot of people get that mi- misconstrued with like, well, well, strictly sex. Because um, physical touch is one of the things to where it's like, yes, it involves sex, but like holding hands, kissing, hugging, cuddling, like intimacy and stuff like that. You know, so the people whose love language is physical touch, 
they tend to be, I ain't going to say more sexual, but like, you know, they tend to be more on you and it leads to more sexual things sometimes to, to people that don't really understand it. And like, oh, well, she freaky. He freaking blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, this is genuinely how these people show love. And whenever they feel, you know, like they feel loved or they feel like they want to give that type of love, that's their thing, you know? And it's just like, what people need to understand is like, we got to stop throwing people into these boxes, right? Because just because that's what how they show love and you didn't take the time to understand it or you didn't take the time to get to know that person and how they express themselves or what love languages even are. Because the average person feels as though they understand what love languages are, but they really don't dive into it. Because with those five love languages that I just talked about, it all stems from childhood. It all stems from some form of trauma or some form of um, upbringing in your childhood behavior. So if people really took the time to understand that, okay, if I'm dealing with a physical touch person, this person was a little bit more neglected as a kid before, or they were overly stimulated with physical touch, touch as a child, and that's how they communicate with the world. That's your children that always got to touch something. The babies, they always got to have something in their mouth. They always pulling on stuff, and they always, it's like they can never not be on you, you know, and like, that's how they develop that love language. The children that just, blah, 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 all that, all that, even like, even whenever they're outside, of like the the babbling stage and they learn how to talk will talk your ears off that's the talk and they're gonna let you know about yourself and about them that's the that's the words of affirmation type of children you know or they had um they have um come back to me they have like parents that were probably neglecting them a little bit and didn't really give them the chance to communicate or express themselves and like they would suppress those children's expression so whenever they become of age Either they turn into a words of affirmation type person, one, because they don't know how to use the words for themselves and they rather receive it because they didn't get that from their childhood. Or I wasn't able to express myself. I'm an adult now and I'm going to express myself. And then everything is the words, 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 you know, and that's just some of the few things uh, she said. Can you recap the five? The five types are one words of affirmation, two quality time, three receiving gifts, four acts of service, five physical touch. And um, but going back to what I was just talking about. Oh my God, Vana is in the live stream, y'all, bro, y'all, Vana. Oh my, hold up, I might be distorting the mic. Vana, I love you so much. Va Let me tell y'all about Vana before I even go in, before I go any further, because Vana could teach this class herself, hands down. No, no tablet, no nothing. Vana is, y'all. Vana literally. Let me tell y'all something. I had a soccer injury, and uh, we just gonna go off a tangent for a second because I gotta give Vana some love. Um, and happy, and happy, um, happy just living. I'm glad you're alive. <laughs> Um, Vana has magic hands, y'all. Like literally magic hands. Um, Vana, I had a bad, bad, bad soccer injury, right? Right before I got into like being a personal coach, personal trainer, and really diving into stuff. I uh I couldn't walk. So it's like my hamstring had I didn't pull it, but like it got strained real bad and I went to massage and being people did not know what it was doing. And it made it even worse. So like it would hurt to walk, it would hurt to like sit down for long periods of time. My mechanics was off. So it took me like about a year or two to like really kind of get back to where I was in motion, but I still wasn't back a hundred percent. So I met Vana, uh, when I was in Sydney in the Sam's, the band, and, um, I met her through, I met her through Sydney. That's one of Sydney's friends. And Vana is the sweetest lady you will ever meet in your life. She's straightforward. And like Vana is so loving and nurturing and, but she's a massage therapist. Right. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give her a shot. Child Vana came to my house. Vana set that table up. Vana put that little, that little, she got this privacy screen thing to where it's like, you're going to feel like you in one world. She, she, the lights was off. She, the music was up. It was a, it was a vibe. It was a whole vibe and dug into my body. Child, there was drool all over the bed. It was drool everywhere. It was, it was just, I, I got off that table. I was about six inches taller. Like when I tell you, I've never had still to this day. I, Cause I used to hate going to the gym and training legs because my my legs was never back to where they need to be since the injury, and like, like now leg day is my favorite day because now I can work them how I want to, you know. And granted, I haven't really I've been a lot busy and doing stuff a lot so much, but um I haven't really had a chance to really uh get a massage from Vana lately, but one's coming soon. But I still like to say, y'all, Vana took the time to really heal me. Like, for real. Like, Vana has a, a strong healing anointing. It's not like, oh, she good and she studied, blah, blah, blah. And she did. She put the time in. Don't get me wrong. She got, she's educated. She's trained. She's certified. All of that. Like, literally the best. And, but it's, you know, y'all know whenever that person just got it. That person, because I done been through physical therapists. I done been through different types of sports coaching. I done been through massage. And this people, I went through chiropractic, this, that, and the third. I done been through all of that. 
But Vana, I'm telling y'all, bro, Vana came through and did something. And it's not just me. Uh, my friend Scotty, who body builds, changed his life. Uh, Amber changed her life. I'm trying to get her on with my parents. Uh, to get them to like, and if y'all and she's um she's in here, y'all. So y'all, please go add her. Please go talk to her. And she's like, bro, look, it's worth the money. It's worth the money. Like, and on top of that. Like, especially if you one of them people that have like swollen ankles, a lot of inflammation, you're always having like these really random chronic pains. Like Vonda, it's not that it's not that she it's not that she even just that good. She just like I'm telling you, it's like it's as if God be like, All right, Vonda, go to sleep. I'm gonna take over your body. You know, and like the you you be getting off that table, like, it be it be feeling like I didn't took about four or five edibles. And and the high last all day. And I, this is the crazy part. I had a massage with her one time and someone was like, well, don't eat none, just fast and get a massage and then maybe eat later if you feel hungry. The high that I normally get from getting her massage tenfold. Like I was, I was driving, but I was like, you know how when you kind of zone out and I came back, I was like, I've been on 182 for 10 minutes and I don't know. I don't remember how I got here, but I'm here. And I was just floating for the whole day. I'm telling y'all, go slide back up in the comment sections. Go message her right now. I'm telling you, bro, Vana is, Vana the truth, y'all. Vana, I love you. If you're still up in here, Vana, I love you. But um, let's go into let's go into part two. So let's talk about the. I just had to give I just had to give Vana that quick plug because let me tell you something. Like y'all don't understand when people really come into your life and bless you and really like like they just listen to God without even knowing they're listening to God. You know, I was praying that excuse me god was helped me get my body together because i'm not i'm not trying to be a bodybuilder but you know it's like as a physical therapist and a physical trainer you know i want to look a certain type of way and i want to be a certain type of strength level and a lot of people are surprised because like granted i lost like 20 pounds i'm about to put all that back on um it's like i'm not the biggest but i'm not the smallest but you wouldn't expect me to be this strong you know, so it's like I take a lot of time in working on my physique and my strength to where when my aesthetic side kicks in within the next six months to a year with everything I got going on right now, like y'all going to see why Vana was so important because there was ranges of motion I didn't have that I got back. You know, there was certain athletic abilities that I not say lost, but were inhibited because certain muscles weren't pulling how, how and contracting how they need to. Shardy came through and blessed me. So I love you, Vana. She said, I love you too, B. Glad I could be of service to you. Hey, that's her right here. That's all right, though. Y'all give her some, first of all, give her some love. Second of all, I'm telling y'all, share her page, comment, like hit. I'm telling y'all, Vana gonna change your life. Vana's gonna change our own God. Vana gonna change your life. And she's not a weirdo. You know, like, you know how you got some people that be like, oh, yes. And like, they be like massaging and trying to be all sensual. Vana will find you where you at. I'm, t I'm telling y'all, it's like, and it's an emotional thing too. It's like, you'll be going through something. Vana anointed. I'm trying to tell y'all. And like she'll work on you forever. How much time y'all put to, put aside? And Lord, don't pray before you before you start. Don't pray that God release some things in your life. And then you know she start massaging, and you got blessings coming out of nowhere because she didn't unlock her. I'm not even gonna get into that. Y'all y'all just tap in with Vana. All right, but part two of what we are gonna dive into. Um, I wanna I wanna kind of is now this is gonna be more. I know I got some guys up in here, but it's more so for the ladies. Uh, um, yeah, I'm telling you, just get on her table. Get on that table. You'll never want to get back up. I'm telling you, there's going to be a day where I'm going to have about a, a smooth by 1,000. I lie. I'm going to have I'm gonna have a bunch of thousands. I already told Vana. I said, when I get rich, she's going to be my personal masseuse on call. Like, you ain't got to work for nobody else another day in your life. I promise you I'm going to keep money in her pocket. Son, Vana is the truth. Vana is the truth. But um, y'all got to get off of this. I can talk about Vana all day. Um, What I'm about to say is more so geared for the women. This is the... Because a lot, a lot of men not going to really tell you what I'm about to tell y'all. But... um. Let's dive, let's dive into the formula of how to get a partner as far as like women trying to get men. Now, I will say there's a lot of women out there. Y'all intuitive. Y'all have discernment. You know, it's like y'all already know what y'all doing. Y'all keep yourself up. This, that, and the third. And I'm not, this is not me saying change how you do things. I'm just saying being open to what I'm about to say. So we living in the, let's just, let me get you guys a little bit familiar with the type of man that we have this day and age. We're living in a day and age where men are way more gullible and, and easily, easily or well, easier to be used than before. Because you have people, well, you have men these days. Good morning, uh, Ms. Aber. Um, You have people that, well, you have men, I'm, I'm going to specifically talk about that, who really don't know how to go through life right now. And it's a good bit of them. We living in a time where a lot of men are coming from, I'm talking about destroyed, broken homes. 
a lot of single single mom type of households. You know, like chivalry is kind of dwindling, and and I'm not I'm not saying they don't exist no more, but like you know things are changing. Things are, are kind of on a decline, but it, it has to happen before the incline happens. But it, it like that's history. It's gonna always do this. But for the men that we're dealing with right now, you know, a lot of broken men. That's why if you're a very nurturing, a loving person, you well what type of woman you'll get used a lot more these days because a lot of men they need that. And they get what they can, they feel satiated, and then they dip and they try to go find it from person to person because they are broken. A lot of men have been getting used because we're in the day and age to where it's like, if you don't even come out the gate throwing bags and trips and this, that, and the third, you can't even talk to me. And that's a real thing right now. It's like, like you got people that ain't even getting no attention from no woman unless they drop bags on them. You know, so you got, it's a whole different type of chase like cat and mouse type of game these days and these men just looking for some real women and i'm gonna just be honest with y'all it really ain't no big secret but i feel like the hard part these days is that the and i don't i don't want to rub man look if the shoe fit it fit because i i want people to be offended by this but i feel like the people that's watching me right now y'all not these type of people what i'm about to say but i feel like there's a shortage of real women these days just like there's a shortage, just like I talked about how men are broken right now. There's a shortage of real women. So to set, so how to be different and how to catch a guy's attention and how how to really stand out. Because a lot of people like to base it off of looks and just that and the third. Now, and granted, people are fickle. You know, like you got most people definitely are looking for looks and stuff like that. But the thing that's going to really like, man, something about her. Like just from a guy's standpoint, it's like. It's some it's something about it, or is this that and the third? When you a real woman, I'm talking about a real like I'm so, y'all know what I'm talking about like to the core. A real woman know how to nurture, know how to be there, know how to give love, know how to receive love, know how to put that nigga in his place, and know how to coincide and mingle, and you know, and know how to be that that real rock because we we don't have we have a shortage of women that know how to be that rock. Now, granted, I understand it's cause and effect. A lot of men, a lot of broken men, you know, they don't they don't know how to be that that umbrella for the family anymore. You know, they don't know how to lead. They don't know how to provide. Everything is flashy, this, that, and the third, and I get that. But what I'm saying is when you reach that caliber of being a real type of woman, all of a sudden you have access to the men that deserve you. Because I feel as though, and it's just my opinion, I could be wrong, but I feel as though it's not really that, it's a shortage of men that's after women. It's a shortage of a quality of man that's after women right now. But you have to understand that you're only you only have access to these type of men and they only really see you or acknowledge you or deal with you when they realize you're a real woman. Y'all following me? Because it's one of the things to where you got to be you got to be real mindful of how you carry yourself. How you how you treat others, how you manage yourself, how you manage your emotions, how you move through life. What do you have going on on your end? Because a real man, when he comes in, when y'all come together, people feel to realize it's like relationships and marriage is not oh, what you can do for me. It's a partnership. It's a union. So when we come together, we're stronger. We're building. We're better. We're going to the next level together. So when a high quality, good woman is now allotted to and gains access to a good man, she's visible. You, it's like it's like magic. It's like all of a sudden, boop. Like you wasn't on the radar before, but now you've grown to who you need to be. Right as a woman, boop. Now you're on the radar. So now you don't have to deal with these little cheering. You don't have to deal. Now I'm not saying, I'm not saying the the little snot noses and the people that's wasting your time. I'm not saying they're not gonna come because they're a dime a dozen and everybody DMs. But what I'm saying is, you're gonna get to a level of discernment. And of discipline and patience to where it's like, you know, what type of man to give attention to. So just like they know what type of woman to give attention to or to take a risk on when you stand out and be different by being a real, a real woman and like a real ride or die, like, or I'm talking about a hundred percent real woman, the type of man or the type of men that you're going to gain access to. I'm talking, I'm talking about going to change. Your, it's going, you thought, Niggas ain't blah, 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 and this ain't that. When you really step into that new realm, you're going to be like, dang, that's what I've been missing out on. Because we, I mean, I'm going to be honest, we still out here. It ain't like we not out here. But it's more so like, 
we move different now because we don't want to get used. Just like y'all don't want to get used. We don't want to get used. I know for me, if I was single right now, I would be happily single. I would be patiently single because it's like I'm not about to waste my time with somebody will fly me out. Give me a Birkin, this, that, and the third. I have no problem doing that. But just like you got, just like I have to give effort for you, you got to give effort for me. And that's, that's the thing about a real woman. A real woman and a real man, once they come in, once they coincide with each other, it's a mutual effort. It's a mutual understanding. It's just a vibe. Just how people like to say, it was a vibe. It's really a spirit, but like, oh, it's a vibe. You know, so it's like, it's no more having to guess. No more having to write standards. And there's no more having to really assume or like, well, I got to do something different and blah, 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 blah. And this, that, and the third. Because she said, you must have been in my convo yesterday. We just tapped in. That's all it is. We tapped in. Um, you know, birds of a feather. But, you know, it's like, I feel like women don't need to, women need to stop trying as hard and putting so much faith in every man. Know what, that's, that's what we talked about yesterday. Know what your needs are. Know what your wants are and make you a category, make you a little list. Here's my needs. Here's my needs. And then sprinkle a little bit of wants. That's our formula. Remember that the formula is know what you need and then sprinkle your wants on there. And once you do that, and you got that combination going, and then you finally walk. Because you got to think about it. You attract. It's not. See, what you saying and what you be thinking sometimes, yeah, you attract that, yeah, because you're promoting that. But from when it comes down to the, our spirits, you know, regardless of if I've met you or not via social media or in person, when you're, sp- like, when you really know what you want and need and you're craving it on the inside, that sends off a vibration. That sends off a frequency. That sends off a spirit. That sends off a signal. So those type of guys who are in tune with that, boop, here they come. Oh, you came out of nowhere. Yeah, because you finally in tune with me. Well, what with the type of people that we are. You know, so don't, I will say, watch what y'all, the, the real formula is to one, be a real woman, and two, watch who you give your attention and your sex to. That's another thing. Like, y'all got to realize sex is power, especially on the woman's side. I, bruh, if y'all was, like I said yesterday, if y'all was to say we not giving no kitty cat, no box, no, no gawk gawk 3000, if we ain't giving, we ain't giving none of that to no man that don't know how to talk to us, don't know how to blah, 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 do all this good stuff, like real good, high quality men. If y'all don't set the stand, what's up, Tyler? Good morning. If y'all don't set the, the standard for that and say if y'all really deny like men until they give y'all that. Men as as a whole in society is going to change. Niggas going to start getting jobs. Niggas going to start saving money, doing right. Niggas going to start going to church. Like, like I, I, oh, my mama, I'm trying to tell y'all, the world don't move without women. I said this like the first week when I first started the, all the stuff I'm doing. The world does not move without women. I don't care what nobody say. I'm not saying men can't be leaders and providers and we can't move the forefront and blah, 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 blah. blah. But if go, it's in history. Every good society, every good army, every good everything was backed by a woman, period. Like, a good woman would take you from a Reese's Pieces to filet mignon. And I'm not even, I'm not even trying to be funny. Like, I'm for real. Like, solid, good, great women. A lot of people don't understand that. When you take care of women, think about the time and the time and the age we're in right now. Women are scared to go outside by themselves. Women are scared about um about like the type of men to date. Women gotta worry about, you know, all this rape stuff going on. Women gotta worry about what they're wearing and all these rules they're trying to put on women's body, this, that, and the third. Imagine. Imagine. If and when well, I'm gonna say when, because it is it's history. It always does this. So it's gonna come a point in time where women back up again. But imagine whenever we're gonna get back to that time. To where, like, women are really treated like the queens they deserve to be and the queens that they are. Imagine the society we're going to live in whenever you really take care. And that's one thing I be having. I be trying to tell my friends. I be trying to tell these other niggas. I be trying to tell people that be trying to come at me crazy on Instagram. Because y'all know I be talking on Instagram, too. It's like, well, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, that girl don't deserve that and blah, 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 this, that, and the third. Nigga, it's not, you rarely have to tell it's just just thinking about them stupid people just get me mad all over again when you treat a chick right and you didn't take the time to really get to know her and you're nurturing her and i ain't gonna see like people say people like to say spalling i don't it's like it ain't spalling it's giving her what she deserved when you treat a woman right 
you know, and you give her quality time, you 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 pet her love language, you're there for her, you're providing conversation, good sex, this, that, and the third, and we're just gonna keep it a buck. Whenever you're doing everything right, you don't have to ask a woman for nothing. You're gonna get random gifts. You're gonna get good quality time. You're gonna get the PlayStation you want, even though I don't, I'm not into that type of stuff. You're gonna get the PlayStation you want. You're gonna get the you ain't gotta worry about if she's cheating, this, that, and the third. Now, granted, nobody not everybody's perfect. You got your women that that can they be getting these type of niggas and they get the world and this, that, and the third, and they still be going in and cheating and acting stupid. But you reap what you sow. I will say that. It's like I used to I used to want to get vengeance on women like that so bad, but they gonna they always get theirs. You're you gonna get yours. Because God is real and spirits are real. But I'm talking about for the people that wholeheartedly, you know, like dive into their woman. And when that when you die, when you really show a woman real love and I'm not talking about like, oh, well, I'll give her this, that and the third. A girl can get good sex and good materials from any nigga who's going to take the time to figure her out. You know how many women is married, been married for like 10, 15, 20 years and don't feel understood by their partner. I feel bound and shackled in their marriage because like, well, I'm married. I can't leave now, you know, and y'all and like y'all not realizing the levels that y'all can go to and like the intimacy that y'all can go to and the things that make y'all insecure can vanish whenever you really dive into that woman. Because when you that's one thing about a woman, you got y'all got to think about it. A woman is a field. A woman is is somebody who gives birth. The ultimate power source. Life does not happen unless it goes through a woman. Life does not even conceive unless it's it happening inside of it. Think about how powerful that is when it comes down to her words, her actions, her literal, physical, God-given physicality capabilities that she has to bring life into this world. And you mean to tell me you're not even going to try to sow seeds of understanding, nurturing, quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, uh, services, this, that, and the third. You're not even going to try to get that to Because when you, when you do and when you really tell, and I'm only saying that, y'all, I'm talking from experience. When you do, I'm not saying y'all not going to have no ups and downs because that's just life. We human. But God, dog, whenever you really like just really dive into a woman, the things you can get, the unexpected things. I, that's what I love about good women. You get unexpected stuff. You get real stuff. And the stuff I love that I love when I don't have to ask for nothing and it just happens. I love it because it's like, dang, I deserve that. You And that's another thing about when you give when you give a real woman some good love. You don't you think you know what you deserve and she start doing what she feel as though like, oh, well, this what he deserve. I'm going to take care of my king. This, that and the third. Y'all like to clown them hotel niggas. And y'all like to clown them niggas that really be like, oh, this my queen. And they treat it like that. Y'all like to clown them niggas. But guess what? Them. They got the best women. Be why? Because them women are protect. That's nothing to protect her. Y'all know me. I keep that thing on me and I like to fight win or lose. You're not coming at my old lady sideways. You're not. And you're not coming at me sideways. So she protected. I do what I got to do in my business and to make sure the bills paid and I'm doing what I can. On top of that, I'm making sure that I'm staying in shape and doing what I got to do to make sure everything else in the bedroom is, is qualified for and handled. You feel me? And on top of everything else, I'm just trying to be an overall better person and like really like taking care of myself so I can take care of her. And I noticed the more that I really dive into myself to become a better man, this, that, and the third it's like the levels of the relationship, the levels of like the quality. And it's like, you know, what's crazy. You could be in a whole relationship and being a good nigga and like really working on yourself and trying to, you know, really giving love to like, you remember what I talked about that frequency. Now you're on that wave. Now you're on that thing. A whole don't be surprised when a, when a whole bunch of other women start coming or like you a woman, you know, giving that to a man. So don't be surprised when a whole bunch of other niggas start coming because now they picking up on that. Oh, you a good one. Oh, you got some value. Oh, you got some. You you precious. You real. And now the plethora just starts coming. Cause that's one thing about bro. That stuff be I ain't gonna lie. Used to aggravate me. It's like especially women that I used to like. I want to be interested in. It's like I, as soon as I get in a relationship and start doing everything I was supposed to be doing. Here come everybody that curved me. Here come everybody that all of a sudden is so say interested. Oh, we want. I want to hang out. This, that, and the third. And y'all know me. I could be. I could be heartless sometimes. And I took. I literally told this chick one time without saying too much. Cause I ain't gonna lie. I was. I was mean. This happened like two years ago. I want to come back and this, that, and the third. I miss you and blah, blah, blah. I miss that, blah, 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 blah. I, I literally told her, I said, you're going to wait until I get in a relationship, a very public, out and open relationship, to sit here and come and try to waste my time and pull me from my relationship. Blank you. And I just and I just unfollowed her. Because it's like, why are you wasting my time? Like, now? Now you want to be here? But that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. When you get on that frequency, when you get on that wave 
of like, okay, I now you attracting this type of man. Now you attracting this type of woman. Now stuff just like real like you it's a different type of life. It's a the trips are different. Even if y'all just going we from Louisiana, so y'all know y'all know to us, uh Texas is, is uh is a trip to us. Them trips to Texas are different. Them trips to Florida and all this stuff are different. The dates are different now. The conversation is different. You know, it's like you want to carry yourself better. It's like you, it's like a good, a good partner will make you just want to do better. Tell you what kind of woman she is. That part. You beat me to the punchline. Especially when you start investing inside of a woman or a man, vice versa. Like how, how much you give and how much you try to dive in and what they give back is going to tell you exactly who they are. And that's and that's another thing too. Watch who like you know how they say, I don't, and I don't want to butcher this, I don't want to butcher this um the saying, but I don't I really don't know it verbatim, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna try to say what I know. It said try it said don't cast your pearls among swine. I think that's what it is. And when it comes down, I say I like to say this. Whenever you decide, or you feel as though it's time to take a chance or really go in and you feel like I can really be a genuine love to this type of person is then the third and you start giving, 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 trying, 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 attempting, you know, and like you really trying to like give them like, Oh, well here, let's, let's get it right. Let's do it right. And the actions don't line up with reciprocity or forward moving progression, no matter how much. And I, and I know it hurt y'all. I didn't been through it. No matter how much you love that person, no much, no matter how desperately you want to be with that person or how you feel as though about this person or they can change that in the third, that's your sign. That's your red flag. That's your red flag. One thing y'all got to realize about love, about real love and real interest, you don't have to beg for reciprocity. You don't have to beg for attention. You don't have to show somebody how to show you. Effort should be reciprocated regardless. Effort should be reciprocated regardless. Effort should be reciprocated regardless. Because whenever you really giving love and you really moving forward with women and like with men, like y'all in your relationship and stuff like that, effort is the thing that's going to be. Look for those flags. Good morning, Allie. Look for those flags. Look, look for the, because that's another thing. All these red flag trends. And it's funny. I get it. You know, you got to make light of a dark situation. That's really what social media is. But I need y'all to really like, instead of laughing at them red flags, start paying attention to them red flags. Because when you don't pay attention to them red flags and they start flagging and that wind gets to shaking them flags around trying to get your attention, like, Lord, give me a sign. Lord, uh, help me out. And, like, the flags just popping up all over the place and you just like, I can't see. Good thing I can't read. I'm Ray Charles in this thing. Like, you got to really understand. Get them, It's hard. I understand it's hard. Get your feelings out the way. Sometimes, this, bro, look, I done been in the situation. Sex be bomb and you're blinded. Sex is... Sex bomb, conversation bomb, but y'all not meant to y'all not meant for each other. Y'all not y'all really don't work for each other. But all the other stuff that pleasures you is so enticing and like it, it makes you forget you're all bubbly, you know, and you're going through this, that, and the third, and you're not realizing that by six, seven red flags then popped up. But all you're thinking about is, ball, when you get off, I'm about to this, that, and the third, ball. I'm about to hit you with the Meg the stallion your knees. You about to get that back break of 5,000. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you get so caught up in that in that pleasure, in that system, in that routine to where it's like whenever it's actually time for you to catch the red flags, it's too late. You're so, now you didn't invest in your heart. You're investing in your emotion, your love, and your time. And it's like, bro, it's like, what? what? You look back and it's like, dang, what did I miss? And the science been there. You know, that's why I say women. Like, why? Because y'all the ones that got the real power. In my opinion, I feel like women got the most power. Women just got power when it comes down to that stuff like that. But it's like, be mindful of who you get a box to. And be, like I said before, be mindful of what happens whenever you tell them they're not getting it. Watch how they act. If they went from, like, texting you all the time, and, and like, I'm for real, like, really make them wait. You know, flirting and texting, sending random memes, haha, FaceTiming. You know, you got the you got the love, the love. Uh, it's late at night. He got his do rag on, whatever. You sitting there trying to trying to be. Oh, I don't look good. You got the look. You got the little filter in the wig on. You're like, oh, I don't look good. But you sitting there trying to pose and look all cute on the phone. You know, like whenever if that changes, the moment you say, oh, well, I want to wait until I know for sure, and all that stuff changes, red flag. That's a red flag, because his desires for you shouldn't be based strictly off of what he can what he can pound out of you or pound into you and i'm just gonna be real about it it's like 
if that's what he thinking with, if he really thinking with that and he not thinking with his brain and all of a sudden the interest dies and the, the, the FaceTimes go, the random FaceTime goes away. He not popping up at the job no more. He not getting these texts no more. This, that, and the third. It sucks yet. But take that as a sign that get on, get on, uh, get on great. Go ahead somewhere. You know, cause now, now I know you really ain't, you ain't no good for me. Cause oftentimes we get caught up on, but that's because we, we rarely get that type of attention. But what people fail to realize is that's a test for you to go to your next frequency, to go to your next, like, you know, I say glory to glory to go to your next glory. Because if you, if you start chasing after men that do that to you and you st now you're pursuing more heavily than he is. And this, that, and the third, then guess what? You didn't disqualify yourself from a whole plethora of niggas that was about to come your way. And you had more options, patience and discipline, patience and discipline, discernment, like, Watch how these niggas playing on your time. Watch how these niggas playing on your attention. Watch it. Because the moment you start stand, that's the thing. Nothing's wrong with being a woman with standards. Standards. Nothing's wrong with that. If they start backing up and this, that, and the third because you want to move a certain type of way, guess what? Get out the way. Because now that just means the nigga that I want is rare. The nigga that I want is worth the wait. The nigga that I want is on the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not about to waste. And then then all that for what? Say you do all that chase and then you get with him and he a two-pump chump. Or he ain't got what you need and it's whack. Or it's that and the third. And now you didn't waste the time. Now you got to get all his spirit out of you. And then you got to go through a whole detox. Like, and I'm just I'm just keeping it real, y'all. Like, I'm not, I'm really not trying to be up here being funny. It's like, it's like, even though it is, I mean, it is funny. <laughs> but like, it's, I'm just trying to be real. Because like, I didn't been through that, y'all. I didn't been through that. You know, and it's like, you got to just, just have value for yourself. Hold the utmost standards for yourself. You know, keep your love languages intact. Because if you don't, you're gonna be going through hell and high water just to get just to get what you feel as though you want and need and this, that, and the third. When at the end of the day, you are the and that's the thing I need women to understand. Y'all are the ultimate manifestors. Y'all are the literally the walking embodiment of manifestation. Life literally comes through y'all. Literally. So imagine when y'all go back and watch some other videos I was talking about, about how to manifest and how to use affirmations and how to believe and how to turn your voice into something tangible rather than something audible. And you put just a wet sticky mess for nothing. For real. For real. Y'all don't even get me started. There's this one chick. Don't even get me started. But I say all that to say, like, y'all, when y'all really tap into who y'all really are and really learn how to walk into your powers like i like to say your superpowers your life your life ascends so high and the things that you thought you would never get just start falling i'm telling y'all bro especially women when you tap in like think about it we living in a day and age to where a lot of black female entrepreneurs are on top right now why they channeling their manifestation they're channeling their wits. They're channeling everything that they walk. In. I don't care what nobody say. Some of the, well, most of the smartest, most, if, if we're going to be honest, the greatest athlete in the world to ever walk this planet is Serena Williams. And Serena Williams is a, it's a black woman. I don't care. I don't care how you want to, I don't know what she can't dunk and blah, 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 blah. Look at her titles. Look at her accolades. Look at her record. Look at her skill set. Look at her career. Look at her path line. Look at her, her life right now. That girl is the best. I don't care what nobody say. That girl is the best. Period. You know, and it's like, imagine women as a whole, when y'all start like really walking into y'all manifestation and y'all superpowers and stuff like that. Like, I, I love that a lot of my clients are like, there it's a it's like middle young like middle aged women to about the oldest client I have is almost sixty, I wanna say. She's about to be sixty. And all of them in that age gap, so focused on like a lot of them in school, about to graduate. A lot of them got kids trying to be the best example they could be for their kids. They're they're emotionally balanced. They're trying to work on themselves. You know, they're moving forward and I love it. Because it, it it's like it's so beautiful to see women like being all about women now. And really like catering strictly to themselves and pushing forward for themselves because like I'm giving myself so much. So the type of nigga that got to come into my life got to meet me here and more or more. You know what I'm saying? And like that can be intimidating to a lot of dudes, but it's like you're not on my you're not on my level. You're not on my pedigree. You know, there's billions of people on this planet. Y'all don't settle. You got you got you got niggas out here that can meet you where you at and and some. 
like I said earlier, when you come together with somebody, I'm not saying y'all not going to have your ups and downs or you're not going to have moments where like, okay, I got to pick this person up. They, they growing in this and this. Because like, you got a situation where people have to grow together. You know, we're both in the growing phase of walking into success. You know, but like when y'all when y'all meet, like I said before, the partnership and when y'all really start diving into it, emotionally, physically and spiritually and mentally, it's one of the things to where it's like you you're building, you know, it's a forward motion. It's, it's real life, like really picking each other up by the bootstraps and like the, the accumulation that's going to come, the love that's going to come, the abundance, the prosperity that's going to come like. I don't know about y'all. I am one of those people that still strong heartedly believe in marriage. I'm not dating just to date. I date to marry because always oh, just a piece of paper. And what well, only difference is the ring. Does that in the third? No, 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 no. Ignorance. It is a spiritual thing. It is a very spiritual thing. Whenever y'all really quote unquote become one and y'all really been working on this y'all really been pushing forward y'all really been putting work into this relationship and y'all become one for real oh my god like y'all just don't understand bro i wish i had more time to talk about it y'all just don't understand this life stuff is real regardless of what controller you want to play the game with regardless of what system you want to play the game with, we all in the same video game and life is real life is so real y'all and once y'all really understand that it's just it's, everything just going to start happening when you really start putting yourself where you need to be in position because life is about position. Life is about that's how I see how that light starting to hit me. That's how you know I'm on it. Like life is about the positions you put yourself in and how you build yourself forward and moving forward. And the people that come into your life, like my mom always say, come to add, subtract, multiply, divide. And like my dad always say, there's a season for everybody there's a season for everything know your seasons and know how people function in your life if you in a season of construction isolation really building on yourself and people are starting to try to come to your life are certain type of men trying to deal with you ask yourself i'm in this type of season okay are they trying to add subtract multiply divide in my life if you in the season of abundance wholeheartedness reaping everything that you sowed and you just walking in blissfulness and Tom, Dick, and Harry start showing up. Okay, y'all hit a multiply, add, subtract, divide, which y'all trying to do. And once you really start positioning yourself how you need to be, understanding the season that you're in, functioning how you need to function, everything starts happening. And like I said, life's not perfect. We're going to go through our ups and our downs. Life's going to happen. Bills are real. Emotional processing is real. Trauma is real. Bad people are real. Life ain't all sunshine and rainbows. But at the same time, you that should not that should not ultimately kick you off of your road to be the, a better person to understand the seasons of your life to work on yourself and you have bro look there's seasons where you have to be down i'm sorry y'all that's life there's seasons where we like for me i'm coming out of a season where i was down and now the the climb the come up is so real like the sacrifices i didn't made the stuff I had to go through, the people I've lost, the people that have literally died out of my life, you know, is like processing and dealing with certain emotions, becoming a better businessman, becoming a better man, you know, really working on myself. And like I, I was down for some months. Y'all would never know because I know how to move. But like I was down for some months. And like now I'm in the place to where it's like everything's starting to come up. And I'm and I because but God had to show me. Like, okay, dude, you a hustler, you do this, that, and the third, and you're working on yourself, but don't forget that I'm your source. And I'm this is my quick little testimony. I ain't gonna go too deep into it. But God had to show me that, like, yo, bro, yo, buddy, like I like first you need to heal, because you ain't healed. You're not healed yet. You sitting there trying to do this, that, and the third. You wanna be Mr. Motivation, you wanna be Mr. Speaker, you wanna be Mr. Community, you wanna be Mr. This, that, and the third, but you still dealing with some unresolved stuff. Sit your behind down and heal. And I had to. And on top of that, I had to get better at how I do business. I had to understand business better because some aspects of my business were lacking. I'm a go-getter. So I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do whatever I know 110%, you know, because like that's just how I am and that's what I do. Blindly being ignorant. Okay, well, you lacking on this. You're going hard, but you're going hard without the proper knowledge of your business or how you're supposed to be moving. So you're moving, but you're moving in the wrong direction because we get hustle and ambition and overdoing something. And we somewhat accomplishing because we're working so hard as oh, we're supposed to be doing it as opposed to you don't even have to work 
at as even 10 percent as hard as you are now if you just do it how you're supposed to be like for how what it's meant for you and now as i'm coming out of that season of reconstruction healing getting over my insecurities giving like let me tell y'all something insecurities will jack you up emotional trauma will jack you up if you don't deal with it suppression that was my thing i was suppressing so much stuff just trying to be there for everybody else trying to trying to make sure i'm doing this that and the third for everybody else and not really tending to myself and when i finally just really got back into reconstructing on myself God, i'm telling y'all god had to strip me down i'm not i'm not lying like my like normally around the court that's hot and that's not before i even get into that god had stripped me down i had i had so many one-on-one clients i had two group classes booming I had shows back to back. Everything was going. My life was on. It was like a TV show. And God was like, no, buddy. Before it get too big, that's just a little taste. Before it get too big, I need to strip you back down. You got some work to do. And I fell into somewhat of a depression because I was like, Lord, I'm doing everything you promised me to do. I'm trying to do my job. I'm trying to do this, that, and the third. Everything was going good. Now the money's short, this, that, and the third. Because I don't work for I work for myself. Three years. You know, so far, three years. And it's like. I really been trying to get this thing going, you know, and it's like it was going good. And then God stripped all of that away from me. He's like, hey, buddy, hey, 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 you got to do it this type of way, because the way that you're trying to do it, you're going to burn out within the next few years. That's too much. That's not that. That's not for you. You will you will go get it. You a dog. You'll go get out the mud. But that's not for you. Sit, pull, let me pull you back real quick. I'm talking about y'all strip me down, strip me down. Y'all strip me down like it was tough. It was tough. The car, like, the car started breaking down. Clients started leaving. Bills started piling. I'm just be real with y'all. God had pulled me back, and he was like, now, will you believe in me, and will you really let me be your source in the middle of literal hell and high water? You going to trust me? You going to trust me? And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do it my way no more. I'm going to give it to you. My routine changed. You know, I started praying differently. I started moving differently. I started fasting more. I started tending more to myself. I started being more tentative to my relationship, this, that, and the third. I really started, like, you know, I've been, I started going into, like, what I needed to learn for my business, uh, trying to get better at what I do with my gifts and talents and stuff like that. And now it's like the money been finding me. It's like stuff just been coming out of nowhere. Hey man, can you come play this show? Hey, I heard about your business. I wanna um, I wanna be. I need a. Uh, I do one on. I need to do a one on one training. Hey, I heard you got a detox. This and and keep in mind, if y'all notice, I haven't been advertising like I normally do, because God really been having his thumb on me. And he was like, bro, like there's a new formula. Catch the formula, and it's like, it's so. Cr- and I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful. And that's one thing. That's one thing about me. I'm a publicly give God glory. Like. As a living with, as all y'all up in here, God has been blessing me. The more that I listen and work on myself, God has been blessing me. Don't, don't, man, look. When everything, when he starts stripping stuff, it's hard. I understand y'all. It's months like I was down. But when I really learned how to really direct, redirect my source and get stuff to where I need to be, like things just start happening. People are like, oh, miracle sign and wonders. That's real. When you really start to like get in tune. It's real and it happens. It ha- you can walk in so it's so crazy. Favor ain't fair because you can walk into some stuff that you don't even deserve. But simply because you listen to God and God strips stuff away from you and he got your attention. And now you know how to move a certain type of way. Somebody that got that are, are deserves it more than you that have been trying to get it. They still ain't got it. But you got it in two weeks just because you learned your lesson. Favor ain't fair. But whenever you actually lining up with what you're supposed to be lined up with, stuff just starts happening. Like I said, it's a video game. Everybody, we got superpowers. Like, we really in this thing together, y'all. But there's a source who created this game. And he can alter the cheat codes. He can alter everything that's going on. And if you really tap in, and if you y'all, y'all can say what y'all want. Oh, oh you talking Bible and blah, 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 blah. Go ahead and be a naysayer. Go ahead and be a disbeliever. I don't care. I'm speaking from experience. When you tap in, when you get real about it, and when you really start living your life for yourself and working on yourself and trying to get as in tune with God as you can, everything starts falling into place. God will be like, by any means necessary, I'll maintain you. And I'm trying to I'm trying to tell y'all, bro, like, it's so crazy. I'm talking about I was so down 
and still like trying my hardest to like just believe in God and do what I had to do. And the day certain things were due, money will come out of nowhere. New client will come out of nowhere. Like y'all don't understand. There's so much abundance. There's so much favor for every single one of us up in here right now. There's so much for us to go around to where to where it's like you think, well, what if I get all this? Is it left for anybody else? Bruh. There's so much going around that so many people ain't getting because they're not tapped in. But just because you're on this live stream right now and I'm I'm a walking testimony for all y'all that's supposed to be up in here, and y'all gonna understand when you start listening. Whenever stuff start getting stripped away and you start asking why and you start getting answers and you really you really start like locking in and doing what you got to do. I'm telling y'all, we we going everybody in this live stream, we always going on tour. We got we all got the potential to blow up and really be prosperous and really walk in this faithful. I'm telling y'all, favor ain't fair, but when you lined up, it's for you. It's for you like I'm going to sound crazy when I say this, but I'm not paying for my next car. Like, I, I already know that because I, I already got know what I want. I want a Jeep. I want a Jeep Wrangler. You know, I want that thing to be decked out. I want it to look sleek. I want it to look smooth. And that's going to be my first real brand new car I've ever owned. God already told me I ain't got to pay for it. So whether that be a sponsorship, whether that be somebody blessing me with it, I don't know. I don't care. I receive it because guess what? It's for me. Favor ain't fair. I don't care. I know what I've been sacrificing. I know the hell I've been going through. I know all the stuff that was restricted from me. I know everything that was taken away from me, everything that I've been working hard to get back. I know what I deserve. I have a million. I have a multi. Yo, I have a multi-million dollar business. It just hasn't gotten into the right people's hands yet. Whenever the right clients and the right co piece of community or the other little pieces that I'm missing start coming into play. Watch how I take off. And I'm not trying to brag. But watch when I take off. And I'm one of those people to where they be like, well, watch who you tell you, your dreams and your visions to and blah, 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 blah. None of y'all stronger than God. And that's on God. None of y'all stronger than that, man. So you could hate all you want to. You could pray and do whatever you want against me. God got me. I ain't nothing you could do that, that could rip. So you mean tell me you stronger than him? The same person that didn't, that even in my lowest of times been pulling me by my bootstrings and pulling me up. And dragging me the way I need to be, even when I don't want to go there and I'm not where I should be, and still giving me come on, man. Stop playing with me. It's like, so I I know the things. Like I'm telling y'all, I'm a dreamer. Like, God be talking to me in my dreams and like has been blessing me with the skills. And now I'm in training to dissect dreams and to really understand it and get messages from it. And it's like, I'm telling y'all, bro, we all have that same favor. We all have that same capability if we tap in tap in and tapping in for you that's nothing let me make that clear tapping in for you ain't tapping in for me that's not the same process at all i know for me me personally god gonna see my face every day like for tapping in for me is i refuse to even look at my phone before i pray in the morning before i even talk the first person i'm talking to is god i'm not there has to be some point in my day well, I come in here or wherever that I'm in my house and I have to I have to start speaking things into existence. I have to write things down. I have to pray. And on top of that, I know tapping in for me is a lot of like really walking into what I'm supposed to be in my daily test. Like y'all like I really ask God every day. What's my test? What do I have to do today? Because the more I just focus on what I'm supposed to do, everything else follows because y'all it's like it may sound crazy. Oh, he want a Jeep for free and blah, blah, this, that and the third. That's so small. In the grand scheme of what God could really be blessing us with. That is so. It is. I'm talking. Let me find something. Y'all look. I, I ain't got nothing that small. Matter of fact. I think I. So. This is. This is the Jeep I want. Right. Y'all can barely see this. It's a little penny. And this is just phase one of what God trying to really throw at me. It look like I'm missing a finger. But I got all my fingers. Um, This is just a fraction of what God trying to throw at me. So don't don't sit there. Don't sit there and play with the man that's out here calling the shots and moving the chess pieces and giving the blessings. Don't play like that. Even when you and that's that's another thing you need to. Like I said before, you need to be down sometimes so you can open your eyes. We be in go mode. We be so ready to just get it. Excuse me. We be so ready to just do this, that and the third. Not realizing we need to take a step back sometimes. We need to be humbled. We need to we need to really self evaluate. Like I know for me personally, like. I'm so used to doing everything for my doggone self and like trying to be the provider for everybody's that and the third. It was like, 
you know, I had certain things in my relationship that I had to let just happen, you know, because I can be just so on top of it to where it's like, yo, let me show you. I was like, let me show you something real quick, you know. So before I go any further, y'all, first of all, thank you. Like I said, thank y'all again for hopping in and tuning in. Thank y'all so much for just giving me y'all time because I'm, I'm like we way over our normal time. And I'm so thankful that we had extra time today. But y'all like tap in whatever that is for you. Tap in, stay focused. If you're getting stripped down, don't beat yourself up about it. Life happens. Sometimes you got to get stripped down to get to get rebuilt. Whenever think about when they're restoring um, artifacts or stuff, certain things that's been rusted over time and they're restoring it. They got to strip down all that rust. They got to strip down all that debris and all that stuff that's been on there. And they got to polish it up, decorate it, and then they can redisplay it. You're not ready to be displayed yet. That's all it is. You're not ready. It's and it's okay. It's okay not to be displayed. You don't have to be displayed right now. Look me. I'm I'm really in the shadows right now. Honestly, it's like I, I know I'm not being displayed right now, cause with the business I got, pff, with the stuff that's about to hit me, come on man, come on man. Like with the stuff that's about to hit y'all life, it's okay to not be seen right now, man. It's like it's okay to be in the background for right now, but learn, construct yourself. Whatever you got to go through, go through it, learn it and do it. Because whenever you walk into that spotlight, you can't cut it back off. Oh, we got to start the show back up. No, once the once they hit play on the show, on the live show, guess what? You got to perform. You got to execute. So when they call your name or whenever you get that job offer or whenever you get what you've been praying for and you finally walking into this, that and the third, guess what? Be ready. Don't be one of those people that get opportunity. And you ain't prepared for it. Oh, I've been down. I've been so depressed. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. Take the time to build yourself to heal and to grow. Because when you, when everything start, excuse me, when everything start manifesting and when everything start getting away, it got to go. And you on the spotlight and it's your turn to drive the wheel. Don't be like, oh, I didn't go to driving school. Yeah, that was your responsibility. When you down, when you're down, and even when you're not down, do you do diligence like I always talk about? Study. Hone your craft, pray, fast, meditate, see God, dive into your spirit, analyze your dreams. Y'all got me if y'all need dream services. Tell me about your dreams. I don't charge that much. Tell me about your dreams. We could dissect it. I'm going to give you a full counseling session. I'm going to tell you what it means. I'm going to tell you how to get your way out of it. I'm going to tell you how to manipulate. I'm going to tell you what to do because it's, 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 all, it's all superpowers, y'all. We're just learning how to fly. We're the next Superman and Superwoman. We just got to learn how to fly. That's all it is. We don't we don't know how to use our powers yet. We trying to stay in